Okay, God bless you, everybody, and good night. Um, welcome, welcome to another uh Wednesday. We were on a short break for a couple of weeks last week, but we are back at the word again. Hope everyone is well. And so far, uh, your week has been going uh on a pretty good note. So we're just going to pray and get right into the word uh for our our lesson this evening as we seek to close out on this series of pray uh surviving in an evil world heavenly father lord jesus we just want to bless you and give you thanks thank you for another night thank you lord god for your goodness thank you for your mercy lord god as we are about to go into your word we pray Lord God, that you'll just once again be in the midst of your people and let it be a word that is efficacious and uh, uh, meaningful to all of us so that we can learn uh, to live thereby. We just want to bless you, give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have been in First Peter chapter 5. And if you can recall where we began uh, with uh, this topic, we we really spoke about the, the focus has primarily been on the individuals in the environment of Peter. And those individuals, just like us, uh, he was giving them a measure of encouragement giving them a measure of, of also his experience as it relates to his relationship and the progress of that relationship with God. Uh, one, I believe one of the enduring themes of Peter's, is Peter's life was the fact that he demonstrates really just how much when the Lord has called you that you cannot relinquish from the call. And it doesn't matter what you go through, your experiences, once God has called you for, for a particular purpose, he will see you through to that purpose, through to its fruition. And... Uh, I think no other scripture uh, or verses, passages of scripture demonstrates this as to what we have been discussing. And so we will look again back uh, in First Peter chapter 5. But just before we do that, we want to talk about uh, what our topic is for the night. And definitely... We are on prey, surviving in an evil world. And session five's topic is after a while. After a while. First Peter 5, verses 10 and 11. But the God of all grace... Who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Remember now, I started my leading by talking about the fact that we have been discussing the individuals in the environment. And if you look at our review of session four, which was prayed to power, the things, uh, the two words that came out to us predominantly were the words resist and steadfast. If you remember when we 
uh, looked at the Greek translation of resist, he saw the word antisame, and which it meant to stand against, stand in opposition to. We highlighted that the word is the same word that comes out in the scripture, uh, standing with the whole arm of God so that you can stand and having done all to stand, which means you are resisting and having done all, you continue to establish that resistance. So you stand in a particular uh, frame of mind as it relates to the enemy or the adversary that is seeking to devour you. Remember one of the phrases we also found that was uh, applicable to this word was inverse agonist, which is we are stand, it's a, 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 an effect of uh, like in medicine where a certain uh, agent uh, is acting upon the body and uh, we take a particular kind of uh, uh, medicine which has in it particular properties that will react in an inverse manner to what the the allergen is trying to produce so so the allergy is trying to make you sneeze or make you uh, come down with a fever or, or is trying to induce a certain kind of, of reaction, allergic reaction. But when you take uh, the particular chemical uh, medicinal product, it, in, it, it, it could produces an inverse reaction, a, a reverse response. And so that's the kind of notion here that Peter is trying to, 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 to bring across that we have the power within us to react differently or to produce a different response to what the devil is trying to create. One of the other words we looked at was steadfast, stereos, which is being solid, being, 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 having a solidified stance. And, and remember, we spoke about that from the perspective of the Greek phalanx, which was a body of armed infantry formed in ranks close and deep. So your 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 stance as it relates to to the adversary, to the enemy, to the circumstances in our lives that are are opposing us, coming against us, is is that we have to have a certain kind of stance that is military in its 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 uh, expression. It and 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 here is that military ex. Uh, 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 example of the kind of position that we take and what we are doing is we are taking the, the resistance and we are standing not in anything but we are standing in the faith in what we have believed we are standing in what we have learned we are standing in the word of God we are not standing on our own uh, devices. We're not standing on our own opinions. We're not. We're not trying to stand on our own philosophy, but we are standing against the adversary in our faith in what the, the Word of God through the Holy Spirit has been molding and producing in our lives, building that faith. Because it's one thing to read the faith in the Bible, but it's another thing to have the application of that faith that is molding our spiritual life and molding our spiritual development. Uh, the, the faith of the Bible has to translate to the faith in, in the life. And until those two things meet one another, there is going to be a constant struggle. And sometimes in our struggle, 
uh, until we get to that state of maturity, there is going to be uh, winning of battles and losing of battles. And, and until we, we become mature in some things, we are going to continue to lose the battle in some things. But Peter is telling us here now to, to, uh, to understand that the lion, which is always stalking and prowling, has to be uh, uh, opposed in your faith by, the, uh, by, by having uh, a kind of maturity, spiritual maturity that helps to keep us grounded. So the translation of the Weiss, uh, as we wrap up uh, our review, said, stand immovable against the onset, the onset. Sometimes the onset is more than one situation. It's situation after situation after situation. So you are to stand immovable. Stand like the, the military flank would stand uh, in, 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 in the face of battle. Solid as a rock in your faith. Don't be, don't be, don't be quick to, 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 to swallow up every wind of doctrine. Don't be quick to move uh, 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 and, and, and be quick to want to get more into the understanding of the word of God so that you can build your faith. Knowing that the same kind of sufferings, the same kind of situations, uh, you are not alone here. It is being accomplished in your brotherhood, which is in the world. So there is no one that is exempt from facing the enemy, facing the adversary. And so, so now Paul, uh, sorry, Peter moves on uh, in his words uh, uh, to, to the brethren. And he says, now, but the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, so, so up until this point, we have, Peter has been, you know, laying out the terrain of, of the life experience. Laying out the terrain of how do I operate as a child of God? How do I operate in the world? How do I respond to the, to the things that are happening in my environment? How do I respond to the things that are happening in my own body? How do I respond to the changes? Uh, uh, sometimes the adversarial changes uh are, are taking place in your own mind, in your own circumstance, in your own marriage, in your own life, in your own house. How do I respond in this worldly environment? And he's, he has focused also, uh, as he has done his deliberation up until now, on the adversary. He points out, he, he lays out in detail, I believe it was verse 8, the adversary who is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may de roaring, seeking whom he may devour. So, and, and so he is expressing uh, in discrete terms the kind of evil that we are facing in this world. But up until now, the inspiration that is given to Peter for this word now shifts. And, and you can see the shift taking place in verse 10. The shift takes place where it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like the inspired word of God now that is flowing as Peter speaks. God now introduces himself at the end of the conversation to say it's like it's like saying last but not least. It's like he's saying 
all right, we are in an evil world. We live in an environment that can be so devastating. And sometimes the environment itself and the things we face in the environment can be so overwhelming that even as a child of God, you feel alone. You feel as if you are facing the world's pressure in your immediate circumstance all by yourself. Because uh, the enemy can come from so many angles. Uh, and and he can take you in such an unawaring manner, uh, uh, such a secret uh, prowler. Uh, and, he, and, 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 and all of a sudden, you're feeling a particular way about your own life's projection. And all of those things can become overwhelming. And, and, and as he's encouraging, I just see the shift in the atmosphere and the Holy Spirit now is talking to Peter and, and, and the Holy Spirit is telling Peter to, to remind the people that there is a God. But the God of all grace. In fact, Peter now here, the, you can see the, 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 the alignment of the word of God as it flows through Peter. And, and it is now portraying to his audience and it is portraying to us that there is something that we must always be aware of because as evil as this world is, you are not alone. The very reason you are in the position of the prey is because of the God of all grace. The God of all grace has called you, has chosen you, has, has, has selected you, has singled you out. To not just go through these experiences, but in going through the experience to experience all grace. So it's an evil environment and sometimes... Uh, we, we we can get to, to such a point where we focus on the evil environment to the degree where we, we forget the God of all grace. And here is where I, I, I'm sure this is, this is just nothing but the inspiration of the Holy Spirit because Peter is looking uh, as he's talking. I'm sure a lot of his experience uh, is reflected in his own mind. And as he reflects, in his own experiences, here is God uh, coming out, coming out in it. And this is why I, 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 I appreciate the life of Peter because he's a man that has never gotten it all together, yet he's chosen. He's a man that has made so many uh uh, faults and mistakes, yet he is chosen. He is the man that Jesus predicted before his own face that you would be a failure. You would be, you would deny me. And he, and, and, and he swore, oh no, not me. And he did the same thing, but yet he experienced the God of all grace. Those are the things as you go through your experiences that let you know that you have been called. It's not living on the, 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 the mountaintop every day, every hour of the hour, but it is when you go through your experience feeling like you were targeted 
feeling like you have been left out, feeling like you have been left aside, feeling like you have been cast aside, yet you experience the kind of grace that only God can give that makes you understand that you are not a target of evil, but instead you have been a target of grace. The lion was simply the catalyst, the, 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 the mechanism whereby God would use for you to understand that you are covered. So let's look at the word grace. The word grace, as, as, as denoted in the Greek expression, really now what Peter is conveying as he speaks is that divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life. Grace, that graciousness, uh, the grace of God, that the Bible talks about the grace of God, uh, that, that, that man uh, has come to man, in, 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 I'm paraphrasing. Uh, it, it, it's where we, we come in, in, in contact with grace how we are saved by grace we are not of ourselves but it is the gift so so grace is that experience that that god allows us to have and and as we go through different trials and circumstance that divine influence upon the heart enables us to have a different response than the response that the enemy is trying to trigger. So, so understand now, he, he talks about resisting and he talks about being steadfast in faith, but it is that faith that is, that is, 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 is centered through grace. That faith now becomes uh, the, the, the medium through which we have uh, the divine influence. Because I tell you, if you don't have uh, God moving in your heart when it comes to certain circumstances of the enemy, you will want to fight him or fight with the same kind of, of weaponry that the enemy is trying to fight you with. If you don't have the divine influence you will you will try to to react in the same way that the enemy is wants you to react because the issue of how we get defeated brethren the issue of how we get defeated is when we choose weaponry that is not of faith when we choose weaponry that does not uh, 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 subscribe to the things of God, to the word of God. That is when we fail. Because we, the Bible talks about flesh. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, which, which admits to us that we have to wrestle. So don't feel, don't feel uh, 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 cute about the fact that you have to wrestle. We wrestle not. So we are engaged in a contest. We are engaged in a, a, a battle that we are expected to wrestle. But it is the weaponry. This is why Paul talks about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So, 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 so divine influence comes from the God of all grace. And it is that divine influence now that is that is orchestrating how we stand and how we resist in the faith. So it is... Uh, the grace which is divine, note where it is influencing upon the heart. Because this grace has one objective. The grace 
the God of all grace. It is an it is a life experience. It is a life experience medium that is to produce growth. Grace is growth. The experiencing of the God of all grace as we battle our day-to-day -day demons, as we battle our day-to-day -day tendencies, as we battle uh, our, our, our enemies in close quarters, as we come against those things that are, are will take us unawares, the fiery trials, the 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 enemy that is breathing down our necks, the people that don't like us, the, the environment that feels hostile, the, 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 the very mindset that sometimes is negative, the grace is to produce growth. So I'm in an evil world, but God is, has given me the kind of grace that I need in order to grow. Paul talks about the sufficiency of the God of all grace. And he captures it in 2 Corinthians 12, 7, and he says, and uh, lest I should be exalted above measure, because sometimes, brethren, the, the evil... Uh, the evil can become from the good. So, 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 so let not your good be evil uh, spoken of, uh, because sometimes the 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 and the 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 the, the, the adverse condition is not necessarily from the outside. Sometimes, even within your own spiritual development. The enemy likes to utilize how you feel about yourself uh, as a measure against yourself. And here is Paul saying that he was given a thorn in the flesh and he besought the Lord thrice that it might depart, whatever that is. And what was the response in this attack from uh, Paul's perspective. The answer he got from God was that my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So the answer he got was my grace I'm giving to you, Paul, is sufficient. It is enough. It covers you in your resources. My grace is your resource. My grace is your eternal platform. And as you go through your life experiences, that grace is going to help you to be, to be perfected through the difficulties that you're going to experience. Most gladly, he says, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Understand this. Understand this. Sometimes in your sadness, you're building power. Sometimes in your, in your low spirit, you're building power. Sometimes in that situation where you feel as if you have not accomplished what you should have accomplished or you are you're feeling not where you feel you ought to be the grace that god has proclaimed over your life is building power because sometimes brethren with our mental capacity we don't know what we need when we need it. But when the situation that, that only God knows about and only God knows more than we know comes upon us, we find the grace. That's why it talks about the grace to help in the time of need. It is that grace, that covering, that, 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 and that, 
special uh, influence. So it says, therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses. That is the evil world. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. So grace is growth. Why? Because as Peter says, uh, the God of all grace who had called you. Understand that you are a prey. Understand that you're in the position of prey. But it is not a sign of weakness, but an expression of design. You have been called into this situation. You have been called to face the enemy. You have been called to go through this pathway, this life path that you're on. You are not where you are simply because of uh, 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 your own doing. It, it is the grace of God that has taken you into the circumstance to which you find yourself. And if you are where you are at this moment, it is because of the glory of God and for the glory of God and by the glory of God. An expression of design. So, so, so he says, no, it's the God of all grace who had called us. My mother didn't call me. My pastor didn't call me. My sister didn't call me. My father didn't call me. It was God that called me. That same grace that spoke into my heart, that made me turn onto his unto faith. It was the grace through faith whereby I received the goodness. And if he called me, he's not going to leave me because the issue is he has called me with a view. The word unto means with a view to his eternal glory. So understand now that when you are facing the lion's hunt, understand now that when you are in, in the circumstance, in the situation where uh, it seems as if it is strange, it is new, you are here by design. You are here because God has an eternal glory in mind. He has a fixed purpose in mind. He has an eternal end game in what I am going through. I have been selected for this lion. I have been selected for this jungle. I have been selected to, to face this kind of adversary because the glory of God has an intention for my life. And it was an intention before the world began. I was chosen in him. That's why he says now, in his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus. The word by really means in Christ Jesus. Which means that uh, uh, the, I, I am in a situation now where all things work together. For good, Romans 8, 28, for to them who are called to eternal glory. This is the same thing Paul is expressing to the Romans. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That's why we are called in Christ Jesus, that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. And the thing too is that he says, if you have been predestinated, it means you have been called. And if you have been called, you have been justified. And if you have been justified, you have been glorified. What, he, what, what is he saying here? He's saying that there is, 
there is nothing that that is not done that doesn't follow something else that is also done. There is nothing that 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 is is God is not going to call you into an incomplete calling. So if you have been justified, you 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 have to go to the next step because it is a part of the call. That's why the Bible talks about being complete in him. There is no incompleteness in being called. If I am called, I am on my way to completeness. If I'm called by God, I he will not suffer my foot to be moved because the calling of God is without repentance. And so he is ensuring that as I go through this evil world, that I don't become so focused on the adversary that I forget the God of all grace. That is why I, when I see the word, but, but the God of all grace, it's like he was just motoring along uh, in, in, in his divine expression about uh, the things that can happen in life. And a lot of it, I'm sure he remembered from his own experience. And then the the, the God, the, the, the all wise God just dropped in his spirit. But God, but God, remember, irrespective of what you are going through, even though I've given you the, the, the mechanism whereby you can face the enemy, but if God, but God has to, but God is still in control, but God will limit the, 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 the actions of the enemy, but God will stand in the gap, but God will do what only God can do, but God will stop the darkness, but God will stop the lion's mouth, but God, oh my God. But God, God will ensure that the calling is complete because God's call is a complete call. That is why it can be done before the foundation of the world because the enemy cannot stop it. The enemy cannot... Uh, the enemy cannot reverse it. The enemy cannot stop in, in one part of the process and cause it to be derailed. And that is why the enemy can only be but your adversary day and night. Because all he can do is accuse. All he can do is slander. All he can do is growl. All he can do is roar. And seek whom he may devour. Because the call of God by the grace of God covers you. And you are covered by Christ Jesus. I'm kept alive by Christ Jesus. The, the Vincent Word study puts it this way. The best text omit Jesus. So, so, so what he's saying there is that you're... The, the, the wording is in Christ, which also renders better in Christ, denoting the sphere or element in which the calling and its results take place. Christ as the life, Christ as the head, Christ as the very principle of all existence to the Christian. So I face my enemy in Christ. I face my enemy behind the blood of Christ. I face my situations in the name of Jesus. I face the darkness in the light of Christ. And he's saying all of this to say now that because of the God of all grace, there has to be a conclusion. 
If you notice, at the end he says amen. But before he gets to the amen, he says this. Even though you are going to experience situations that may be difficult. After you have suffered a while. And in the Greek text, it really means a little. And so, Peter, sometimes you need to uh, classify your little because sometimes my little feels long. And your little feels uh, uh, longer than uh, a while. And that while seems to can never end. But in the but he really looking at the, as he looks at your future, as he looks at your eternal calling, as he looks at what God has in store for you, as he looks what at what God has promised us, it is a little while. And he says, after a little while, I am predicting. That's what the Greek text is saying. I am predicting that after a while, after you have gone through what you have gone through, I am predicting that you will be perfect. Perfect here means not necessarily from the perspective of you will be a perfect person. What it is, because this is a life journey. So he's saying after a while, you are going to get to a point where God is going to thoroughly complete you. He is going to make the adjustments in your life that will make you equipped to live your life. He's going to make some things. He's going to repair some, some things. After a while, if sometimes, have you ever noticed sometimes in your, your life experience, it is like you go through a cycle of, of, of situations that, that, that you, you, it's almost like a washing machine. You can predict the cycle. And you can predict that at a certain point, uh, your life is going to shake up, you know, and, uh, and then, you, you know when the end of that cycle is going to come, when everything just starts spin crazy, crazy, crazy. And, 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 and what he's saying that after the spin cycle is done, there is going to be rest. He's, uh, the, the spin cycle was meant to dry some stuff out of you. The spin cycle was meant to spin some people out of your life. The spin cycle was meant to spin you into your right mind. The spin cycle was meant to repair some stuff, repair some stains. So perfect. He, you will become perfect. He's going to equip you for living. Equip you to do his will. Equip you. And, and Peter is talking from his own lived experience because Peter understood that his own spin cycle was when he would after after he was on the Mount of Transfiguration for example and when he saw Christ in his divine white suit and he saw him talking to Moses and Elijah and he he, he got crazy and said let's build three temples and stay here forever. Uh, part of Part of those uh, th that that sense of immaturity, understanding that that's not where your purpose is, Peter. Your purpose is not on this mountain. So I need to keep repairing you. I need to keep putting the making the adjustments in your in your life. Uh, you took off the man's ear, but I've given you grace. So so after that, I'm going to make more adjustments because I have called you a rock. And by the grace of God, a rock you shall become. You need to understand that God has, there is a name that God has called you. And by the grace of God, you shall become what God has called you. So, so he is predicting, like I am predicting, that after you have gone through what you have gone through, you shall been adjusted the things in your life shall begin to come together 
the, 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 the right bone connected to the right bone. The repairs in your life will be made. That is what perfect means. So it's predicting a four-stage process. You will be uh, repaired, be made new. You will be established, turn resolutely in a certain direction. You, 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 you will come to that place in your life where you understand who you are. You understand where God uh, uh, has called you. You understand that in you there is work, there is value. In you, God has given you purpose. You are established. The same kind of strengthening that Jesus said to Peter back in Luke 22, 32. But I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, become established the brethren. Help the brethren to get to the same place that you are. I am predicting, and here is Peter living out that prediction, living out the prayer of God, living out the prayer of Jesus. I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. I have prayed for you, Peter, that despite what you're going to go through when I leave this earth, your faith will not fail, which means that even after Jesus had departed the scene, Peter still had a certain measure of conversion that needed to, to, to take place in his life. And the only way that was going to happen was, when, was through the experiences, the further experiences he would have had to experience. Peter in prison, Peter on the day of Pentecost, Peter understanding that Jews and Gentiles are, are, are on the same level where God is is concerned for salvation. All of that maturity had to come into play because Jesus prayed a prayer. And when the word converted, notice Jesus is predicting that when you become converted, when this prayer becomes to the place of fruition, Turn around and establish some other people. And this is what Peter is doing now in 1 Peter 5, 8. He is turning around and he's predicting to the people just as how Jesus predicted over him his, his full uh, state of maturity and conversion. He's saying to them, after the, you have fought with the devil, after you have been through your struggles, after you have been through your hell and back, you shall be perfect. You shall be strengthened. You shall be able to be resolute in your mind. You shall also be strengthened. Strengthened in, in spiritual knowledge. Strengthened in power. Strengthened in, 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 in what you believe. Uh, uh, and, and not only strengthened, but you shall be settled like a foundation that is laid a perfect foundation that so that that a house can be built on uh, a, a a foundation that can only come through christ So after I've suffered for a little while, I am predicting that you shall be perfect. That no defect remain in you. You shall be established that nothing may shake you. You shall be strengthened that you may overcome every adverse force. And because of the surety 
of the God of all grace. To him be glory. To him be dominion. Forever and ever. And Peter closes the conversation. Amen. Understand that even though we are praised in this evil world, but the God of all grace still has the glory, still gets the glory. The God of all grace is still in control. The God of all grace is still covering us. The God of all grace still has dominion and we allow him to have dominion in our environment to have dominion in our house to have dominion over our finances to have dominion over our life's direction and this is why when uh, the, the, the uncertainties of life come upon us like the, uh, the, the prowling enemy we look to the God of all grace and understand that in him we are perfected, in him we are complete, which means my life process is complete, which means he will not bring me to a state of incompleteness. We give him praise. We give him glory. We understand now that, yes, I am a prey, but I'm a prey of power. I'm a prey that is covered. I am a prey, but I am complete in him. And I will survive this evil world. Amen. God bless you. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just want to thank you for your words. Lord God, you said we will overcome this world. And we overcome this world even by our faith. Lord, we, take our, we don't take our faith for granted. We stand on it. We feast on it. We mature in it. Because you are the God of all grace that covers us in every circumstance. Lord, we will learn to give thanks. We will learn to have a hallelujah. We will learn to understand that all our life you have been faithful. All our life you have been so good. The goodness of God, the grace of God keeps running after me. The grace of God will not let me die. The grace of God will not let me go hungry. The grace of God will not let me go lonely. The grace of God will always provide. The grace of God will always be a shield and a butler. The grace of God will always work things out for my good because the God of all grace that has called me unto a view of his eternal glory shall complete me. I thank you, Lord. I bless you for this assurance of your word. I bless you for this blessed understanding that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And we just want to praise you and worship you and give you glory now. In Jesus' name, in Christ's name we pray. Amen.